I've been welding since I've been 12 years old. Combining two pieces of material together and knowing exactly how they go together, that's what I like. MIG welding, gas metal arc welding, TIG welding, uh, submerged arc welding, oxacetylene welding, oxacetylene cutting, brazing, bot welding or resistance welding. I know how to do all of those processes. Ever since I was a kid, everything would come apart and to find out how it worked. Bicycles that I worked with and uh, even if I had an AM radio, everything would come apart. Since we were such a, an industry town, we basically had to choose some type of tech trade. So we started in grade nine. Honestly, it was just something I flowed into and, and did it naturally. I took it all the way through high school and when I finished with it, I continued on in, into college. Burning yourself is part of the job. You will get a spark that will go in and nestle in somewhere, and you gotta keep welding. Even though it's burning your skin, you gotta keep welding, you don't stop. And especially when you weld overhead, all the sparks are showering down on you at all times. And if you're not properly covered, you can get burnt quite easily. So you, you gotta imagine that an arc at 10,000 degrees, what kind of damage that can do. Well, and at times, yeah, you will get little burns here and there. Even our instructors in the, in the shops, we all get them and we all know we're gonna get them. We teach our students that you gotta keep yourself fully covered. We treat our shop as a, as a work site. So if a student walks in without safety glasses, if they come in with shorts and sandals, we send them out of the shop. Common tools I use here are hammers, welders, grinders, and just a lot of specialty equipment that we do use. The favorite piece, my uh, magnetic particle wet bench. It's very, very high in amperage. And what you would do is you put a current through a part and with the magnetic fields that are produced from it, you get to find defects. To me, it's uh, one of the most fascinating pieces of equipment that I have. It's instant results to find any type of defect or discontinuity. I never even thought about being a teacher. And I got a phone call one day asking if I ever thought of teaching. And then I went through the interview process and, and yeah, here I am. Welding was always uh, put upon us. If you're not good at math, be a welder. The stereotype of that it was like a, a trade that nobody really wanted to do, and it was a low-skilled trade. I quickly found out that it wasn't a low-skilled trade. With some of the calculations that we have to do, is quite intense and, and takes a lot of time, and you have to have math skills and be able to manipulate uh, equations. You know what, in the early days, yeah, you're probably gonna do jobs you're not gonna like. As you get more experience and more experience, you'll find that you get to pick and choose what work you get to do. Right now, the trades are really, really important. Don't get into it because you think you're gonna make a lot of money. You've gotta like it. The average age for a welder is in the high 50s, and they're gonna be retiring soon. We don't have enough people to fill those positions when those people retire.